One thing I love about people coming to my truck is that I love to see their first bite of my skewers or their peanut sauce and they go like then I knew that I've done my job. Number 16, chili crab fries and a satay sandwich. The fries for here to go. Patio, okay, they're for here. Okay, 16 done. Hi, I'm Ellie and I'm the owner of Satay by the Bay SF. We specialize in authentic Singaporean street food. Our signature dish is satay and peanut sauce. It's a family business with my daughter and my husband. This is the only Singaporean Malay halal food truck in the Bay Area. Singapore is about food, not just F-O-O-D. Food is Singapore's soul. Food brings Singapore together. Our signature dishes are mainly satay, of course. There's meat skewers fried tofu, which is called tahu goreng, the satay sandwich, as well as a Singapore chili crab sandwich. What makes a really good satay is the meat itself, the cut of the meat, how you marinate it, the ingredients, how you grill it, and how sincere you are in making the food. It's your soul. Now I'm going to show you how to make satay. These are actually our chicken skewers. I will cut them in strips for easier skewering. I use chicken thigh because it has the fats on here that holds all the marination and the spices together. This is onions and garlic powder, galangal and lemongrass, ginger, coriander, cumin and fennel powder, turmeric, white sugar, and molasses. And don't forget the salt. I don't like a flat taste. I like a flavor with curve, meaning that I like something with a little bit of salt, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of spices. You marinate it for 24 hours and then you skewer it. I'm very meticulous with how I skewer my satay. I like something that's being done with love. And if I don't like anything that's being skewered, I don't like how it looks, then I'll have to take it out and put it back again. Because however that you skewer, it will actually come out when you grill it, it shows the personality of the skewer. It shows the personality of the satay. So we roll it up and let all the juice seep right into the meat. And we put this in the fridge for the next day. Yay! Done. It's probably the most legit. Authentic, like street food. I spent a lot of time in Singapore, and yeah. that was where we met. We met in Singapore. And it's been really lovely. My go-to is the tahu goreng. It's something I haven't had in at least 15 years. And when I first had a bite of it here, I was hooked. I really like the chili crab anything. Chili crab <laughs> fries, chili crab sandwich. It's just really fantastic. I grew up in Singapore in a very staunch Muslim family. My mom is part Indian, my dad is part Chinese with Javanese descent. My mom was always a homemaker. She got into catering business and her catering got a little bit bigger as she needed help. So I was forced to volunteer to be in the kitchen. So uh, it was brutal. I was born a rebel in elementary school. I remember telling my best friend that, oh, I hate this place, I hate Singapore. When I grow up, I want to move far, far away. I felt that everything just did not make sense there. It was, everything was so conservative. Everything was with rules. Being a rebel, of course, I got married at age 18 and it lasted only for nine years and um, got back into the dating scene. Met my husband online. At that time, it was a Yahoo chat line. I told my girlfriend, I want to go far, far away for vacation. She suggested, she says, I need a vacation too. Let's meet in San Francisco. And I messaged David and I said, hey, I'm coming to America. I said, America, right? So he goes like, where? And I said, San Francisco. He goes, oh, you forgot that I live in San Francisco. I said, darn it, I wasn't ready. <laughs> but I said, okay, fine, whatever. And the rest was history. We got married three months later. It was a hard transition because I loved everything to be with my husband. And I, I had a career, I had a home there. I, I own an apartment there. And when I moved here, I was nobody. I didn't have a social security, I didn't have a bank account, I didn't have a driver's license, I had no friends. It was a very hard transition emotionally, but not 
technically because uh, our visa went through okay. I got my I got my temporary green card. I got my work permit at that time. I got a job. So uh, the transition processing wise was was very easy. Yeah, it was easy, but emotionally it was not not easy. It is 7.34 a.m. I start out my day by heading to the store to pick up produce and meat and other supplies. Ellie is in the kitchen skewering the meat and making the sauces. Me, I, I like to call myself the grunt worker. I'm just getting all the shopping done and doing the cleaning, doing the basic prep, cutting vegetables. She's the one that creates the magic. This is the star right here, my grandmother's peanut sauce. Our food truck is all about the peanut sauce. Our peanut sauce is special because it is originated by my grandmother. You gotta believe it's not just any other peanut sauce, you know? I have people coming to my window and said, I have never tasted this kind of peanut sauce before. My answer is, it's my grandmother's peanut sauce. I say, you see the picture up there? That's my grandmother. I got the truck all loaded up. Now it's time to head to Forbidden Island. It is known as one of America's best tiki bars. It used to be our favorite place to go for date night. There's a line before we open. And we gotta get going. So we have marinated our satay, and now this is actually showtime. We're gonna grill it. You put the oil on it. It's like painting on a canvas. No two skewers are built the same. That's like humans. Yes. So while waiting for the skewers to grill, I'm gonna put in the peanut sauce on here. Oh God, this is, don't film this yet. This one is ugly. Ellie, you don't have a choice in what gets filled. This actually compressed rice, the regular jasmine rice, and we compress it. What you do is so you eat it with the skewers and you dip it in. This is chicken satay meal with rice cake and peanut sauce and cucumber salad. We've been married 20 years this August. I don't think she really had the ambition to open a restaurant at first, but the food kept her connected to home all her years of living here. Whenever she feels like she misses her parents, she just go cook a special old meal that her mom or dad used to make. And her mom had a stroke, and now her dad's starting to slow down. She wishes they could see the truck. She knows how proud it would make him. It's like the one thing, one thing that's just missing is having them here. She made both generations proud with what she's done. She sure makes a lot of people here happy with it. There's nothing else like it around here. Chicken, uh, four chili crab sandwich, and palo verde. Whoa. Okay. Oh, shoot. Okay. They want to feed the family. Hey, I'm not complaining. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. I've been an insurance agent for many years, and I worked hard to be uh, one of the top agents. And I was thinking that, hey, why am I working so hard and, and making money for the company when I, ch I can actually do it for myself? I plan to have a business, but not a food business. I actually planned to open a yoga studio, you know, but the path was not open and I said, okay, let's do a food business and bam, it just opened. My grandmother had pinned me down, like say, you are gonna be selling satay in 40 years or something like that. I fought it so hard being a rebel and, and, and I was destined to be in the food business. Oh man, you make me feel so disgusted with myself. <laughs> I feel like a failed rebel. <laughs> It's more soulful when you run a family business. And with a life partner that I have, I think he is the perfect partner for me. So now that I'm in this food business, right, it's a lot of tension and everybody wants to be the boss, but nobody wants to listen. <laughs> you, can't, you can't yell at your coworker. Yes, you can, but up to a certain level. But with your husband or even your siblings, you can just say whatever you want. You can say that you're stupid. No, you're stupid. Listen, I'm the boss. No, I'm the boss, actually. That kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> come on, come on! 
business bagus ya? Alhamdulillah. Ya, yeah, bagus. Yeah. Did you have a good Idul Fitri? You know what? I've been working. <laughs> yes, I know this. Enggak ada masa mau lebaran. Being Singaporeans, you don't come here for an American dream. We don't come here for a better life. But you know what it is though? Technically, I do have a better life here. I can be who I am. I can do whatever I want without being judged. You know, being married to David, he lets me be myself. You know, not like being in Asia whereby you are supposed to behave a certain way. I would say that I'm living my life right now. Am I living the American life? Yes, I am. <laughs> I think I gave birth to an angel because she is not a rebel. At age 14, she has actually learned a lot in our food truck business. She gets bossy. <laughs> the future boss is bossy. Somebody's got to keep us in line. She did tell me one day I am going to take over your truck. You can relax and I'll make money for you. I tell you the truth, I was horrified. <laughs> I'm a protective mom because doing a business is hard. After a while, I, I feel that, you know what, she's going to come out ahead of me because she already has the foundation. She already knows what it is. All she needs to do is just take over. She did tell me this though. She said that I'm not going to work as hard as you. I'm going to employ people. <laughs> That's pretty smart. <laughs> Hey, David told me that he got emotional, huh? <laughs> hey, you know what? We were not surprised. No. He cries. 